They are the priceless and historic items that have been used in coronation ceremonies since medieval times and they make up the magnificent collection of crown jewels housed at the Tower of London. But on May 6, they will once again take centre stage at Westminster Abbey as they are used for the crowning of King Charles III and his Queen Consort Camilla at Westminster Abbey. While most of these extraordinary and dazzling pieces of regalia are based on items and traditions dating back to the 10th century, all but one of the original medieval items were destroyed by the government in 1649, following the execution of King Charles I. Here we examine the history, symbolism and significance of these precious objects, which are held in trust by the monarch for the nation in the order in which they will appear during the forthcoming coronation. Used in royal processions to symbolize royal authority, they also have ceremonial uses such as at the state opening of parliament each year. They were based on club-like weapons often used by bishops in the early medieval period and by sergeants at arms a type of royal bodyguard. Based on an object carried in medieval coronation processions, this was recreated when the crown jewels were remade in 1660 and 1661 for Charles II. Charles Ferris, public historian at Historic Royal Palaces, tells Hello. When it came to St. Edward's staff, no one was quite sure what it was for and they almost didn't have one at all, but Charles II said, No, I want the full set. And it was made even though no one quite knew what it was for and that is still carried in English coronations today. The tradition of carrying three swords pointed upwards, each representing a kingly virtue, dates back to the coronation of Richard the Lionheart in 1189. The current sword of spiritual justice, the sword of temporal justice and the sword of mercy also known as the Kirtana with a symbolically blunted end, were made for the coronation of Charles I in 1626 and are among very few items of regalia to have survived the Civil War. There is also the Sword of State, which was made for Charles II around 1678. It has been used for ceremonial occasions since his reign, including by the late Queen at the investiture of the Prince of Wales in 1969. This extraordinary item is used during the most solemn part of the coronation ceremony, when the Archbishop of Canterbury anoints the king with holy oil. The eagle-shaped ampulla was made in 1661 from gold supplied by the royal goldsmith Robert Viner and has a small aperture in the beak which is used for pouring the oil into the coronation spoon. The eagle's head can be unscrewed to fill it with oil. The design is based on an earlier, smaller vessel, which in turn was based on a 14th century legend that the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Thomas a Becket and presented him with a golden eagle and a vial of oil for anointing future kings of England. Catherine Jones, Senior Curator of Decorative Arts at the Royal Collection Trust, tells Hello. Although it is perhaps the most humble object in the collection, it's actually the oldest. This dates back to the 12th century, and it's the one real great survivor of the medieval day. It was listed among the regalia in 1349. But stylistically it dates earlier than that and may have been supplied to either Henry II or Richard I. The oil is poured into the bowl of the spoon, and then the archbishop will dip his two fingers into it to anoint the sovereign on the hands, breast and head. The silver gilt spoon which has a divided oval bowl, is decorated with four pearls which were added for Charles II in 1661. The spoon survived the destruction of the crown jewels after it was sold to Clement Kinnersley, yeoman of Charles I's wardrobe, who later returned it to Charles II. After being robed, the monarch is given symbolic ornaments associated with royalty, which represent his powers and responsibilities. The practice dates back to Anglo-Saxon coronations.